Okay, let me know that everybody can hear me. Yeah, line 38 saying about ARG. It's okay. That's fine. We're staying, we're good. This really is the one here for the quick play this morning. So, <clears throat> whatever this does to set up, this is the one that I like here to do out of the gate. Or this. Here, I want to put the CAG over here. <clears throat> So just to get organized, I am watching AIG first. Zynga's in the middle. Snail, but should hold all the numbers I gave you. And the CAG is over here. Has to get volume. AIG is the one here for the quick play today. Does anyone have any questions? I wouldn't hold anything to a target today. Let's just do one nice play here and all out. That's it. That's all I care about. All right, let's just have a little more. I don't know what the market does in the first 30 minutes. Not that I care, because I'm not going to trade past that really today, but. <clears throat> well, look at the volume came into this one too. This this volume came into this Campbell's soup too. Shoot. Oh, that's not going to Um, I could watch. What do you want me to do? I could watch Campbell's Soup and CAG or Zenga and CAG. Here, I'm going to put Campbell's Soup up instead of the, into the Zenga. You can do that on your own. Campbell's Soup is in the middle, CAG on the end, AIG is the top one I'm watching, and that's the scoop. These two could have some really big moves in here. I, this is These are going to go. I just don't know when the buying comes in. Zenga you could do on your own. I wrote the numbers in the room for AIG. Really, as long as this holds 52, it's fine. I don't even think it rallies up to there, though. Good luck, everyone. Have a good day today. I'm watching AIG. I'm not doing two things today unless I get a swoosh in something. I don't think that's going to happen. And everything needs to get volume into it. Even the AI journey let it situate itself here. CAG isn't open yet. CPB doesn't look like it's open yet. Okay, let AIG rally. This is definitely not open yet. This is rallying a lot. This I'm just not going to do. This didn't set up right. This I don't like. No. Zenga you can do if it holds 230. 25 by 35 Zenga. There's a trade if it sets up. I'm not doing it. But there you go. Zanga, you could do it. 25 by 35. No, no volume in this. And I'm taking CPB off here. Okay, I'm staying with the AIG. This CAG is over here. I still think it's too thin. CAG is trying to set up though and go. CAG is really too thin. I'm not doing this, but 35. 
35.60 has to be the stop. It's not actually only 30 cents if you want to do it, but it is crazy thin. I'm not doing it. You could do this right here. Sure to put the stop at 35.60. I'm not going to do it. I'm waiting for the volume to come in, and I'm also watching AIG. But you know what? Kai could just go with the volume right now and break 35. You could you could do that CAG if you really want it. You could. There there it goes, CAG. It has no volume though. I'm not taking it, but that could just go right now and get all the volume into it and drop a dollar. And AIG isn't setting up. And this probably is the one here. I knew one of these ones would go big, and it doesn't look like it's going to be Campbell's Sue. This this one here. I'm I'm not doing this, but I, I I might if it gets volume. I'm I'm I might if it gets volume. No, 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 no. All right, I've done nothing. That's interesting. There, there, here goes this. Here this goes. Here, did anybody just do it? Yeah, this is his this is just gonna if you if you did hit this trade bar by bar, but stay with it, it's gonna break the whole number right into this move in here. And then that'll bring in the volume. And if it rallies back, I'll call it again. But here, here it goes. Here it goes. Did anyone just do that? I just couldn't do it with that volume in it. It still is too thin. What's this going on? Uh, nope. Oh. Nah, there's nothing here. All right, I'm trying to look for something to do. I only called one thing and I didn't do it. Or the Zanga, which I don't even know if it's going to hold. And that was a weird entry there and a big stop in this. No, this isn't holding. This has to hold 30. This really has to hold 30. 31. This is right at the number. 27 by 35 Zanga. 27 by 35 Zanga. The first trade never hit, but this is still valid. 27 by 35 if you want to call. I'm not in anything yet because there's nothing to do. This was the one, but it was too thin. This is this is this is great. Did anyone do this? Here's all the volume. I knew I'd get the volume through this bar. And that's it. Here this goes. I'm gonna watch this for a trade setup now in CAG. You can do whatever you want to do, but I actually did call this and it just fell off the planet. So this is the only one I'm gonna watch. This had a very strange setup in here with a very big stop if you did it right. I don't know if anybody did this without my call on it. I don't think this rallies now. If it does, I'll look at it. So there's the Zanga. The Zanga setup, I didn't do it. This is done. Don't do anything with this. It went to the target. It's done. Um, no. 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 And don't short AIG, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna watch this, see if I can get a play in it. If you did KN, you really gotta scalp that. The stop was very, very large. It was fifty cents. So you know, if you did it correctly, it was 50 cents. So I would scalp out of that. If you're in it at 1864, that's not even an entry lineage. We'll go over that in a minute here. I'm trying to find something specific today. I'm not chasing something that's falling with no volume. That is really crazy. And I know the can has value, but your price is way terrible in that lineage. I don't even know why you took that there. So let me focus on what I'm doing. Craft is at the target. This is the only thing that has targeted it left that I see here. Or the Zanga, but it's not a big target. And KN could go to 18, but I don't think it rallies. Just relax.
And don't anyone short this. No, too big of a rally up here. Literally, you're bar by barring this if you did it. And if you did a terrible price entry, then you really have to be careful. I'm doing this here. I'm going to do this right here, Tab. Stop. 3525. 3525 for a kamikaze, but this is going to break. 3525, tag. A minute. The stop is 3525. You can be in this right in here. This is going to roll right over with more volume right in here. This is worth it. This is worth it. 25, 30 cents, whatever you got hit in here, you can do this tag. I'm doing this here to get a play down in here to get some kind of move for the morning. Let me just see where we're going with this now. I'm in it. I just did it. This is the only thing I'm doing here, and let me just see where we're going with this. <clears throat> and you can still do this here, but you don't have a lot of time. Let's see if we can get 50 cents out of this. And if it rallies back, we might get to take more, but I don't I don't think this does. I think this has a volume coming into it now, and it just goes. Stop is 35.25 for me here now. If you got it up in there, your stop is anywhere from 25 to 27 cents. This is here. This is here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. My hand is on the button to take out of half for a quick scalp in here. This was a kamikaze, and then I'll let the rest ride on down. You really couldn't have done the first trade in this, though, because it didn't have any volume. If you did, this is beautiful, but I'm not letting the whole thing retrace against me here in this. Time of the day is good, though. Actually, let's look at the market before I do anything here at all. Look at this market. Okay. All right. I've still got the whole thing here. Let's see. I don't see any green in this yet, but I will take half out of this if I do see any at all. It's kind of like a scalpy thing. 77 was a low, I think. It's going to go right down to 50, though. I'm in this right now, and this is just it was a really late... And I'm just really, really just bar by barring this right now. Then I'll look at something else. But really, nothing set up really right today. It was either not enough volume. Here, this is going to, here. If this breaks through the low and goes to some number in the 50s, I'm just going to get all out. Here it goes. It's going to try. Come on, you can do it. Here it goes. Here, did anyone just do this with me? Or did you do the first one? Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Tag. This is it. This is my whole morning here. There's nothing else to do and nothing else set up right, and I don't like anything else, and here it is. This is it. This is it. It's going to go right down to 3450. I'm just getting out of the whole thing wherever I do in here. This is it. I'm done for the day after this. No piggies, no nothing, and I'll give the lecture. Here we go. Here we go. There, I'm out. I took the whole thing. Out, 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 out. Out. That's it. That was the first target. <sighs> Just really was crappy that this had no volume. So crappy that this had no volume here. I know some one of you did it, Jeff did it, but you should not have done this with the volume. You just can't unless you have 200 shares of it, and even that's risky. And that was it. That hit the target. Done. That's it. No, do not do this. It's not right. And don't do anything that isn't right. And I hope no one did this because it's just not right. And this is probably done too. I'd, I'd be out of this. I, I would be out of this. The market is holding in the sky. The market's holding in the sky. In the sky, the market is holding the low of the day. And I'm not saying it holds the low of the day for the whole day, but for the morning when we trade on today, the market's holding, holding the low, holding on in the first five minutes of the day. And the market is so strong, and this is what we're going to talk about, and I don't even know what to say. And this probably had an awful stop, too, but let's just look. Ugh. Crap. And I'm not calling this here. 
Um, a thousand shares is too much on something that does. Let's go over this. I know it worked, and I'm happy it worked for you and me and everybody else. Oh my gosh, this is still trying to keep going. Here, listen, I took it all out. But if you're still in this, it's going to try to break 56. It literally, if you're in this now, put the stop over 65 and call it a day if it pops you out. I really, this is going to try to get, keep going. This, if you have a thousand shares of something that has 45, 50,000 shares, that means you have one. One fiftieth of the position in that stock. That is too large of a position in that stock. That is, you don't ever want to be a large position in a in, in a stock. You don't ever want to be someone that has any significant large position in a stock because you can get hurt. So this that's something that should just be in your trading plan rule. That's why I have volume requirements. This is going to try to break the low. Look at this. I'm all out of it, though. Here, is anyone still in this at all? If it does break the low, it's going right down to 3420-ish. 3425, 3420-ish. Here it is. It's going to try to break the low. Is anyone still in this? I'm all out. Man, the nice call. Here, is anyone still in this? I got all out because I'm not taking any chances today. But this, this is going to roll over and break the low. Here it goes. Here it goes. Tag. Is anyone in it at all? Man, it's going right down. It's going to go 30 more cents here. Man. Hold on. Is anyone still in it? 56.56. So what that means is that if you have 50 people that have 1,000 shares, that's 1 one fiftieth. That's, that's, too, that's too big of a position. You understand what I mean? So that means 50 people, 50 people is not a lot of pe people, 50 people. When I, when I think of 50 people in a stock, if I think I'm one of 50 people in a stock, I say to myself, boy, I don't want to be in that stock. One of 50 people is like one of three. 50 people could sit in a room and trade with me. 50 people is not a lot of people. 50 people is like not a lot of people. No, don't get back in here. You just had a great train. You did this too early with not enough volume, even though I called it. And I this you just got this whole move in here. It was almost a dollar. And really, you're in here in a trial. Jeff B, you didn't even do the class yet. For you to even be taking any trades when you are on a trial, you really, you know, you should just be observing. And you've been in here all week taking trades. I know it, but... Here, this is going to try to break the low. Is anyone in this at all? Anyone? This is incredible here. But I, I felt like one of these would do it, and it was that one. Here, uh, here, Lionage had a terrible price. What are you doing with this? And Shower Singer, I hope you got all out. Look at this. Everybody got to be out of this. It did it, and I never called an official trade in it. It just never set up right, and and really, it's gonna flip. So I hope everybody is out. That is a piece of crap. And this is perfectly fine. This actually held. You could short Zynga and be in it all day with a stop at two thirty-five. You could risk five cents, and you could do Zynga, and you can sit in it all day and take a nap and come back and look at it. This is actually going to hold the numbers. I said today this was the easiest play to hold the numbers. It probably goes 10 pennies. 2.15. 15 cents. <laughs> but you could do it. All right. Shower Singer got out of the can with profit. Good job for you. Never called a trade in this, and it's done anyways. There's no reason to do it. This is not going to work. I'm glad I didn't waste my time on this. This is way too thin. Uh, this didn't do anything right and looks really ugly. Uh, this, this, this. You can do this if you want. It's late. 35 by 55, it is late. Stop has to be 55. Size yourself for 30 cents. You want to do the CPB. 
it's trying to fix itself. I don't like the rally in there, but it didn't have the volume. That was the reason it had the rally. You want to do this here, you can do it. Stops 55, 30 cents, CPB. Target really is 44.50-ish. This could go $2. It's not really half bad. I'm not doing it. You could do this in here. If it breaks a low, it will get all the volume into it. I didn't like it before. It has fixed itself. You can do this. I'm not. If you absolutely are desperate for a trade and you feel like you can't stand it, you can do it. Stops 55. It's really not that bad for the target. Target's $2 from here. And a dollar at the first one. Dream target $2 on this could go. I'm not here. It's going. I'm not doing it. Um, when I say thin, not enough volume. What about this here? Did anyone just do this? Thin means not enough volume. That was the problem with these ones today. I like the charts. I like the charts, but the volume was an issue, meaning you don't know where the stock's going to open because it really doesn't have any volume in the gap. But I knew they were gapping. Here, this is going. It's got to break 46 to break the low. Is anyone doing this? Anyone at all? It was a late call, but the stop was good for the target. And I just am not doing anything else because I just did a kamikaze that went. And and this is done for now. And let me look at the ones from yesterday. Piece of crap. What was the other one? AXP. AXP. I saw this this morning. I, I didn't rate it, but I did put this in the room. I didn't watch this. Man, the stop was good in this. I could have called this. This has dropped a dollar. Man, I, I completely forgot about this because then I was looking at the AIG. AXP is going to hold all day in here. I'm going to call a trade in AXP if it sets up. Again, I'm not doing anything. But I did see this this morning. I did put it in the room. I didn't do any numbers. AXP didn't work out right yesterday at all. Was on the list uh, along with the other one. This is, this is doing it. Man. What a beautiful entry in this. I don't think you'll ever get any like this in your life in this stock. Mm. 25 cents plus a cushion to drop to dollar. That's a four hour trade in there. I'm going to, here, let me just figure out the targets. I'm going to call this if anybody wants it. It is going to set up again. I got to look at the market though. Uh, man, XP is getting clobbered here. 76, 26, 76 ish. AXP is this this is done for here for now for the morning. But if it rallies up and sets up in the next half an hour, I'll call it. You can't short this again in here now. And it's got to hold 79 ish. 79, 79, 25 ish. And if it doesn't hold that, it's done. Let me just look at the market here if they call any other shorts. Oh, this, this is just like crazy. This market. So crazy, it's beautiful. And this one over the high and was very, very sloppy. I, you know, just, no, I just don't want to call this. This is the one. This is the one in here if you wanted another play. And I'm going to call it again in here. You can do this in here. 10 by 35. 10 by 35 if you didn't take it. There's an entry. 10 by 35 right now if you want it. If you didn't do it there, it's going to go right now. I just gave you another entry. I mean, this is like crazy. 10 by 35. And the original one is in play. Uh, but 10 by 35 should hold in here if it's going to go down and break the low. And if it doesn't, it'll give a full-on correct backup entry. But I actually don't think it should. This should go down and break the low right now. And if it doesn't, I'd be suspected that it's not going to. So there you can do this. 10 by 35. 10 by 35 in this. These are decent stops in this Campbell soup today. These are, this is, I'm familiar with trading this. this is, these are really good entries in this today, actually. They are, for this price point, for this stock, these are great entries here. Here it goes. There, I just gave you one right now. You could have done it if you didn't do the first one. And that's going to hold. No, this has volume. There's 300,000 shares in it. It's not going to get a million or more unless it breaks through under 46. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to trade something with a million shares to take an entry. Here, listen, this is actually decent. I, I really am not doing anything else today. I've had such a long week. 10 by 35, you could have done this. You could still do this in here. 30 cents if you want it. Okay, Zang is a snail. K 
KN was breaking again on the five. I just don't like anything about the way this traded. If you did it, fine. It was a terrible entry, a massive stop. It backed up all the way over, pooped over the high, setting up again. I didn't call it at all today. I don't like the way this looks or trades or anything about it. I just don't like it. It's weird looking. I don't like it. I just made two great calls on this and I didn't do any of them. 10 by 35 is valid. The other one was stop was 55. You're already up. You're up 50 cents for Pete's sakes. If there were 30 some cents, if you did that one, you could almost get out of half in here. And I never called this. So if this sets up, I'm going to call this, but it might not. This is as weak as I'll get out. And the other one, mm, no, I can't call this here. This is the only thing I can call right now. You can still do it. Stops 35. Does anyone anything else say have any questions or anything at all? Uh, and let's talk about the market. Well, first of all, does anyone need anything or do they want me to look at anything or does anyone have any questions? And what did everybody do today? Some people did can on their own. That was fine. Luckily, you got out. Did anyone do the Zynga? It was a snail. Did anyone do CPB? I did the CAG and that's it. You literally could take this here with a stop at 35. I don't know where I got that number, but it's going to hold. Red is in Zynga. And it's breaking right now. 220 is the first target. 215, 210, 205, two dollars. Boop, boop, boop. Every little penny, penny, penny in here, red. Yep, you have this. All right. Who else is in this besides Jeff B? Tempting, isn't it? Let's look at the market. Line 38's in it. Galahad's in it. All right, let's talk about AIG. AIG did drop in the morning and break, and it looked better. But then when I saw it in the open, I saw this look, this look that I'm familiar with. And now look at it. It's not even gapping down. It's actually triggering completely on top of itself. Rallied all the way up on top of the gap. So, again, you rate the gap. You look at the gap, but they still have to sit up. It still has to set up, and I knew this wasn't right. It wasn't right in, right in here. Again, I read the first five minutes of the day, and I hope no one shorted this. I didn't call it. It wasn't right. The action there, the price action into the open was wrong. It was incorrect. It shouldn't have done it, and it just shouldn't have done it. So even though we looked at it, even though it was a valid watch, even though I rated it and figured out the numbers, it never set up, so we didn't do it. This is where you have to come to terms with yourself with letting go of it, even if you love something backing off as soon as you see it do something that's wrong. And I know that's challenging for people. It's a constant, constant, constant back and forth with understanding how to go after something aggressively. I'm going to call this again here, but I'm not doing it how to go after something aggressively and then also have to have the ability to hold yourself back. You, you have to be in so much balance to be able to do that. I'm going to call the CAG if it sets up in here because this still looks good and actually as long as this holds 35, which is nowhere near, this will fall over again. And the market's anybody's guess today what it does as far as the intraday, whether it's red or green. But the market is strong and I have 100% conviction in that. And the confirmation has been happening for the last few days. And yesterday was the full-on confirmation. And the reason the market gapped up this morning as much as it did is because people were short the market and had to cover. And that was, I knew there was going to be around 208, 209, 210 ish um, in the SPY. And it was over the high over 106.25 in the QQQs. I'm going to call CAG again if it sets up. For those of you that are in this, this was another nice call in here with a stop at 35. That should hold. And you could still take this in here if you didn't do it because the entry was 10 by 35. Let's go over the market. 
Look, look at this market, man. Let's go over it. So many traders shorted this market. So many people are hurting this market. People that have been emailing me and what can I say? You got to do what you know. You cannot look at a trend and read a trend based on pivot formations. Doesn't work. If it did, it wouldn't be difficult to figure anything out ever. But it just doesn't flat out work. There's too many levels of support and resistance in a chart. You got to learn to read what you're looking at. A gap tells you how you're looking at it, and that tells you what to read. I did say February would be a very bullish month. Is that one of the reasons we haven't seen some of the follow through in every single bearish gap? Probably. Probably, and we're going to go over some of them tomorrow and Tuesday, but we have seen nice sell-offs quickly into the open and some of the things. Again, it's all about picking the right thing to do, and it's really just about that. The market in the SPY should go to 210 today. It's 50 cents away from there. Market, if it holds this low of the day here at 209, will just rally all day here. And one of the days, I don't know if it's today or it could be in the next two weeks, sometime before the end of the month in February, the market will have a massive green day, and, and it really hasn't. This doesn't count because of the weird topping tail and the bizarro close. This doesn't count because of the positioning here in the chart the way it is, even though the bar is big. What I'm talking about is a bar that's massive, that happens in the market through the follow-through rally and holds and closes green. That will look like an extended bar in the market for anyone probably but me, but it won't be. It'll look like the end of the bullish move that everyone thought was here because of this and all of this, and people shorted it, and people shorted this. You can't short a topping tail. You don't short something because of the close of the bar. You don't short something because the close of the bar is a topping tail or a red bar or anything like that. It has nothing to do with anything. And you don't short something because it made a lower high. But that's what people do. Anyways, we're going to have a big bar in here through the rally, okay, that will appear extended to people that will get shorted. People will short it. Whether it makes the market pull back or whether it continues right on above it, it doesn't even matter. The market will get above it. It will. Whether it's the day after or within a pullback after or above it. But people will think that's the end of the move. People will not give up on shorting this market. Even the people that are hurt. Even the people now that are hurt and down and down a lot. Why? Because they probably added. Every time the market did something like this with the red bars on here in the series of lower highs, they took more short position. Anyways, beautiful setup here in the market. Beautiful trading action today. I mean, I almost even am shocked. I don't even know why I'm even surprised that the market held the low in the first five minutes of the day. But yet I am. Why? Because it's so gorgeous. This is a perfect chart. And I'm probably the only one that looks like that, at it like that because many people think this market is hard to read, sloppy, and they're going to say the market's extended after it has that big day. And it could be today. Who knows? Could be today. Could be next week. Could be tomorrow. Could be February 26th. But the market will have it this month. It's setting up to do that. And people will then say the market's extended. Here, right in here. Kag, if you want to do it again, 78 by 90. 78 by 90, right in here. Right in here, it's at the number if you want to do this five minutes holding 35. 78 by 90 if you want to do CAG. And I'm not redoing it. It's 10 o'clock. The time of the day for this is good, and it's at the number. You can do it. It held 35. This is valid. It still has target. You're going down to get the break for the low at 34 is the number and could go to the bigger number here today. I don't know what the market does, like I said, but CAG is fine. I'm not doing this again, but you could. And it's right here. It's right here. You're not. This isn't too late. Stop, stop is good. Man, the stop is good. Stops. Entries were good today. You could do this, and I'm not, but you could. Okay, 35 is holding in this. This, I just called if you want to do it. Zanga just broke the low. And the only one that did this now was red. And you're up. You could have taken 25,000 shares of it. <laughs> I know you don't get any leverage on the stock at this price. Not that it matters. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the market. Um, anyways, what I was saying was that the market still won't be extended even after a move that it's going to have through the high up over 213, 215 is the next target really. And it still won't be, even if we have a big green bar day and we fly up to 215, it's still not going to be extended. 
And it still can't be shorted, and no one should short that, but people will short it. They will short it. The one thing that's interesting is the longer of the time of the years that go by, and the older that people get, which as time goes by, people get older, not younger, in their process thoughts in their brain, it's harder and harder and harder for people to let go of what they know, even if somewhere, somewhere in some small quiet space inside of them, they know that what they're doing isn't right because they're losing and making mistakes. It's very hard for people to move past that. The lecture I'm going to give today, I'm just going to start right now because I'm not taking any other trains and I'm actually not calling any other trains. And you could be in this and you could be in this and there's nothing else to do. I can't call this again. You should already be in it. And I'm not calling the market long here, but you could have been in the spy long out of the gate. Um, but there's nothing else to do here. Wait, let me just look at uh, AXP. No, it's just, it's just it's just dropping, dropping, dropping here. There's no setup to do. I thought this could have a decent rally with an entry. It's just it, 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 it set up right out of the gate. That's it. Went right down. So you have to almost trade this in the middle of the afternoon today, which would be ridiculous on a Friday. But you could short a 15-minute in AXP today. It could go to 75. Who knows? I don't think it's possible. But I can't call a trade in this here now. There's no proper entry. The one was this morning right away. So that was it. Nothing else in here is doable. This one's still okay. All right, so getting back to what I was saying, um, I realized this yesterday. First of all, does anyone have any questions before I, I start the lecture I'm going to give here today? Does anyone have any questions? I'm not doing anything else. Does anyone have any questions? I wanted one quick play today. That's what I said to myself I was doing. That's what I said to myself. That's the only thing I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing it in. I said to myself, that's all I wanted to do, and that's all I am going to do. Uh, does anyone have any questions, though, about anything before I give my lecture here? Anyone? Is everyone quiet? And everyone should be up. Everyone should be up today. If you did can on your own, you should have been up. You should have got out of that before it flipped. If you did Zingo, you're up. I never called Kraft, and I don't think anyone should have done it. And if you did CAG, you're up no matter what the heck you did with it. And the CPB, you're up. I mean, no one should be down, and everyone should be up. Is anyone in anything else? Is anyone awake? Is anyone listening to me? Am I talking to myself? Should I go back to bed? All right. You're listening? <laughs> Anna's laughing. Okay. I realized yesterday that One of the reasons it's one of the reasons that there is very few people that teach trading methodologies on the planet, and there will always be very few people that teach them that are actually good traders, is because it is challenging. It's challenging to trade at the same time and call trades, number one. Number two, it also is like two different mindsets. I have done a great job in a short period of time because I've had the business for only over two years. And that's a short period of time. It's long enough, but short enough that I've done a good job of not allowing things to get in my head. Here, this is good, by the way. Uh, but every once in a while, it does. Don't go back to bed just yet. Every once in a while, it, it does get in my head. There is two different sides to this business, which is why many people don't do it. Many people just train, they do their thing, they don't teach anything. Then there's people that teach, they really don't trade, or if they do trade, they're terrible traders. And let's just call it like it is. So, you know, it's very few and far in between. In fact, I don't I don't actually even know anyone. I don't I don't personally know anyone. I don't even know of anyone that I really know. Like, could say, like, I know for sure that this person is a good trader and a good teacher. I happen to be both. However, 
in the last two weeks, I have been affected by the two worlds colliding. I, I, don't, I don't know if uh, Sanford's in here today. Sanford loves Seinfeld. I don't think he's in here. He comes in late. It's like George's worlds have collided here in the last two weeks for me. And, and that's something that doesn't happen all the time for me. Every once in a while it happens like when I do an open house. Like, but for the most part, it doesn't really, I'm good at separating it. But every once in a while, it'll happen. And, and it is, it's happened in the last two weeks where George's worlds are colliding here. My, my um, ability to train well and teach at the same time is colliding. Okay. And that has affected everything that I do in the last two weeks. If you've been in here, you may have noticed that if you haven't. You haven't, but I, I've noticed it, and I realized it yesterday. So, but it, it dawned on me that that's why, it, you know, you, you really, really rarely ever or may never find anyone like me, because the worlds collide, and it don't look for anyone that's doing this that can do both, and then you say to yourself, what the heck am I doing? And you just quit one of them. Either you stop trading or you stop teaching, because it's the worlds collide. And it's very challenging for the world to stay in balance. I, I'm a very balanced person, so I'm, and I'm in touch with myself. So I'm able to do it 99% of the time. But every once in a blue moon, George's worlds will collide. And this is, this is the challenge of doing both and doing both well 24-7, okay? So I try to separate it out in the morning, but every once in a while, something happens. And what I noticed yesterday... After the morning, after I had the four picks, what were the four top picks yesterday, Kate? Okay. Which absolutely was a huge play. Oh my gosh, look at this today. I didn't call this in here today. Well, this is too late. Look at this one. Cake was a top watch yesterday. It was a huge play. Zoo, great play. Could have even short in the afternoon. Had a bigger target. Looks like this is rolling over again today. Well, not really, but Zoo was a good one. And Top, which had one 50 cent short move in it, was the only momentum move the stock had on the day to the downside at all yesterday. And the AVP, which flipped right after the first five minutes, which we're gonna talk about this, specifically these gaps on Tuesday. I don't wanna talk about that right now, but flipped, okay. But I want to talk about the points right now. I just want to talk about what I'm going to lecture about right now. But anyways, the worlds have been colliding. And what I realized yesterday is, is this holding? <laughs> it's holding. Uh, what I realized yesterday is that, let me just look at the market. Oh, the market's a little bit red in here. You may... You may actually get lucky in these. Here, you could still do this, CPB. It's holding 35. It's triggered on the 5-minute, 12 by 35, 10 by 35. Some people are already in it. This is really going to go. If it wasn't Friday, if I wasn't exhausted, I really would do this. Anyways, uh, what I realized yesterday, after the morning, and I closed the room out early, I got up, and luckily I, I live in an amazing apartment where I can look outside my window and it pulls me into the reality of what the potential is for my life. It's, I look at the city of Manhattan. I live on the 60th floor and I see the entire city. I have a view that is just priceless. And when I feel down or, or uh, upset or sad or anything, anything at all, you know, I look outside at, at my view and, and I feel alive. And I am so lucky to be able to have, just to walk in front of my window and feel alive and remember my own aliveness. One of the reasons that it's so challenging to train and be successful is that when you lose, when you have a bad trade, you feel bad about yourself and it pulls up all these negative, awful feelings. Here, this is going to go. This is going to go right now. And... What, when I realized yesterday after I went up and stood up and looked at my view is that trading is easy for me because I know what to do. 
But in the last two weeks, George's worlds have collided because I've been talking to so many people. And actually, some of you are in here. And no offense, but some of you that have been struggling, that have been emailing me, I, you know, I have to say what I think and keep my distance because the reality is the negativity, the belief system that the market's hard to trade and it's hard to be successful in the last two weeks has collided in my world when I know that it is easy for me to trade and I know that it is easy for me to find the right thing to do every day and I know that it is easy for me to make money in the market. But in the last two weeks, I've talked to so many people, strangers, and some of you in here that are working through your problems and it has affected me. And this is the reality of being a teacher and being a trader, when you have empathy, which I do because I have a heart and I care about people. Some people, it doesn't affect them. They could care less about their clients or anyone at all. That isn't me, okay? I do care about people and I care about you. And what I'm saying is that the belief system that exists in the market for traders is that it's hard and you will lose. That is a belief system. It exists. But it is really not my belief system. But the last two weeks have brought up all the old garbage from talking to people. And my worlds have collided. Yet when I go out and look at my view and I look at myself in the mirror and I look at my eyes in the mirror and I look at myself and who I am and I know who I am, I know that it's easy for me to make money in the market. So I sat down at the computer yesterday, I traded all afternoon, and I ended up having a huge day. It is about having the belief system that it is easy to make money doing this. You will fail if you don't. Because most people that trade believe their belief system is that it is hard, it is impossible, you cannot do it. And if you believe that, you're going to fail. I need to distance myself from some of this going on with people that I talk to and I uh, and some of you as well and I also need to I need to do that so the worlds don't collide I also need to start talking more in webinars about the fact that it's easy to help people change your belief systems because it is easy if you know what to do and I know what to do because I can sit down and do it I can sit down and do it every day and the difference literally is that slight between getting this that falls off a planet in the first two minutes or doing, doing this. So it's like that much of the where the worlds can collide. The worlds literally can collide that it makes that much of a difference. So I know what I need to do, but I'm telling you in here that your belief system needs to be that you can do this and that it's easy. I will help you to reinforce that. But if you are negative, 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 I'm going to have to separate myself from that because I cannot allow it to affect me in my trading where the worlds collide because I am a heartfelt person and I do care about people but as I've said before some of you need to seek help from professionals it is not me it is nothing to do with trading it's some things that are going on in your heads let me help you with the trading let me inspire you that you can do it let that be my role not trying to solve your problems that it makes me feel like it's hard because that has collided in the last two weeks for me in everything I'm doing and I shook it off yesterday. As soon as I realized what it was, as soon as I stood in front of my window and looked at the world, because that's how I feel when I look at uh, up here on the 60th floor, I'm, I live in the sky. And I know who I am, and I know that this is easy for me, okay? The belief system in the market for trainers is that it is hard. And I don't even want to talk about that anymore to people. I don't even want to reinforce that anymore to people. I want people to do the class, learn from me, it's easy, and follow my trades and do it. Because if you do the class and you take my calls, it is easy and you can do it. All the other things is just crap. And the belief system out there that reinforces the continuous struggle and losses, if you stay stuck in that, you will never get out of it and you won't make it. So you have to understand that you've got to change the belief system.
And let me just look at some comments here. Uh, great Gatsby is saying, you don't understand. You're the first only person proving one can make money. All they have to do is follow your trades. That's what they pay you for. Also, they have to limit their greed. $300 daily would make your day. You're not there yet, but getting there thanks to you. All right, thank you, Great Gatsby. And there's something else I was going to say. The other thing I, I realized this actually in the last month. Yeah, this is a CPB. Well, they all look good. Here, all these trades I just called now, they're working. I mean, I didn't do them, but I just had, I was just so tired after yesterday. But this held at 35. That was a great call. This held two, I think. This held two. Oh, my Lanta. Everything I just called is going to go and break the low and go. I, I, didn't, I didn't do any of them, and I don't care. I, I've had a decent week. I am happy with myself now. I'm in a solid, solid place. I did what I wanted to do today. I just called two great trades, though. These are going to go on. And I don't know what the market's doing here. Let me just look. Um, uh, Jeff B. is asking for the target for this. Did I write it in the room? I don't think I did. 4450, 45.50, 45.50, 45.50 is a dream target. I think you got to watch 45.50, 50 more cents. If it doesn't break that, you're out of half. Time of the day is 10.15. Here, this, this is going. Anyways, reinforcing that it's challenging, you have to work hard to make this, doesn't help me and doesn't help you. And we need to change that belief system. So I'm going to start to reinforce in the room and my webinars and lectures, this is easy. It is easy if you learn what to do because it is easy for me. It is when I'm in that mindset. But when, I, when the worlds collide and I start to read the belief systems of most of the world, of the people that I talk to and lecture to, and some of you in here, that this is hard, 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 hard. It is affects me. And I cannot do that because if I do that, I'm not going to call fabulous calls like I did today and all the calls that I'm capable of doing. Okay. This is why I don't want to read other stuff that people send me. I don't want to read other emails that people send me. I don't want to read other things that other people are saying about the market to send me. You know, what my call in the market is intact. It's going to work. It's terrific. I don't care that no one else is saying it. I'm telling you the SPY is going to go to 300 this year, and I have 100% conviction. Okay. Now, yesterday, even in this, this really was a quality gap. We're going to rate this on Tuesday, not today because I have trials in here. But it couldn't hold itself with the market. The stock gapped down massively, and the market made a new high yesterday. Now, did some of the gaps not work yesterday because of the market? The answer is yes. Not because it was bullish or the trend, but because the market made a new high yesterday. It confirmed what I already knew, that it was higher. That played a factor and a role in what transpired intraday in some of these stocks. So if they didn't go and break early in the morning and have any momentum or move, which this did, this had a 50 cent move in it, but that was it. If they didn't do that and pay you the risk amount, the R's, you couldn't have shorted yesterday because of the market. But again, it really doesn't matter in the long run for us to do the morning plays, but we have to get the right ones. And, and, and if we don't, we won't get the quick, fast plays of the sell-offs that happen into the open. Because it's not going to be a time to trade in the afternoon this year short with the market. Not that we ever do trade the afternoon, but what you'll find yourself doing if you want to do anything in the afternoon is going long. You could have gone long the market yesterday in the queues, and you could have gone long Cisco was a bullish gap that happened yesterday. You could have gone long Cisco in the afternoon. So there were bullish calls to do, and we'll meet in the afternoon this year with the market, but the follow-through in bearish stuff in the afternoon is not going to happen in the market unless something opens and swooshes, okay, or is a corrective gap, which changes the trend in something, 
which we haven't seen for a long time. And, and I can't remember the last time I saw one, actually. The, so, I, okay, first of all, I'm going to say something else. But before I do that, does anyone have any questions about what I just said? I'm going to say something else here then. But before I do, does anyone have any other questions about what I just said or any trades they're in right now? The best thing I can do for you to help with this belief system yourself is to read some books, okay? And Great Gatsby had asked me to send him some books. I forget if I sent him or not. If not, I can suggest some books to you to read. Books that have to do with your mental state that have nothing to do with trading. They're not trader books. There's actually no trader book out there that talks about the stuff that I talk about. Maybe someday I'll write a book and I'll actually talk about it. I'll just write a book about my experiences and I'll write a book about this kind of stuff because it is book worthy, but there isn't any trader books out there that talk about this stuff. The stuff I talk about about the brain, the stuff I talk about about in the wealth manifestation class, the stuff I talk about in the gap class. Does anyone have any comments or questions? So I'm going to say something else here, and then, then, then that's all I'm going to say, and then I'm probably going to still let the room go early here because these trades are working and I'm not in anything. But they're fine. Um, and and, and if, you, if you are in these, it's late. Just FYI, it's 1023. I know the market is showing some red here, broke through the low. But the reality is that it is late and it's Friday. If you're in these trades and they don't break through the low, you need to scalp out of them or get out of 75%, half of them or something. And if you get out of the whole thing, I mean, it's 1030 here, basically. And it's Friday. All right. And you're up money for the morning. No piggy targets in anything here today. It's Friday. And the market's strong, even though it's showing some red. Anyways, the other thing that I realized <coughs> that helps me that I know and that I, you know, I, re I realized this before yesterday, but yesterday just brought it up again in my head, my thought processes is that one of the reasons that the stock market will be something that very few people succeed at or ever figure out, it's, there's two, it's this is twofold. First of all, the market itself is a mystery to many people. It's not a mystery to me, but it is a mystery to many people and will always be. That, what does that mean? That this is twofold. It means that, first of all, there is a, there is most of the people on the planet will never successfully trade the market and make money. Boom, that's it. Then there's people I talk to them, and the people I talk to actually uh, say to me, some of them, that they know how to trade, that they... It's not a mystery. They know what to do, but they don't follow their rules. They're not disciplined. But you know what? That's not true. Many, many people think they know what to do, and they blame it on discipline that they're not successful, but that's false. They really don't know what to do. So all of the people that are losing don't know what to do. You can blame and say it's discipline, but the reality is they just don't know what to do. There's something missing, or they would, they would be able to do it. There's something missing. Okay. And it could be just one little, uh, one little detail thing. Like when I actually sat down then and wrote the Golden Gap class for the Bullish class, which I'm doing in March, even I didn't realize some of the small, tiny, tiny, teeny, weeny things that I noticed that made me say some of these bullish gaps that I knew would work. Like Disney and other ones. Because there is a, there's, there's a difference. There are small differences. There are small differences between the points between the bearish and the golden gap class for the bullish class. There is. They're small, but you know what? It's, it makes a difference. And so the, even the people are saying, I know how to trade, but I'm just not disciplined. wrong -o. There's something missing that they don't know how to trade. They have not figured it out. So all of those people go with all the other people that are losing that don't know what to do, and the people that say it's a discipline, they really just don't ultimately know what to do. There's something missing. One of the reasons that the stock market is this great mystery to most of the people on the planet and will always be, 
and why it is has huge opportunity for people that are able to access it is because what the market represents, and this is really intense now, okay? This is, I'm just saying this and then I'm going to talk for a little few minutes and I'm going to let everybody go. Uh, this is very intense, okay? Then what the market represents is life and death. It represents life and death. When you have a great trade and you make a lot of money, you feel fabulous about yourself, you feel great, you feel alive. When you lose or have a big loss day, you feel terrible, you feel negative, you bring up fear, all of these things. It all is really just what fear is, greed, fear, all of those things, it's death. So many, one of the, the biggest belief system, talking about belief systems that's on the planet, the biggest belief system on the planet is actually the belief system in death, in, in that, that death exists in death. It is not a belief system that I believe in, but it is symbolic of the market and what the world that we live in believes. So when you are successful and make money and life is easy, you are living life and you are alive. When the fear comes in and the losses and the negativity, you are closer to death. You feel closer to death. You are sucked into that belief system that is on the planet about death. That death is inevitable. Taxes are inevitable. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, losses are inevitable as a trader. All of these things, okay? So the reason, the mystery, well, the, the mystery of the market, the golden egg, the whatever you want to talk about with people, it, will, it, is, it was always going to be something far out of reach for most of the people on the planet because they conceptually do not understand or know what I know about how your mind works and the belief systems that exist on the planet and how to change them and conquer them and combat them because it really has to do with life or death, okay? And this is very intense now, this discussion, but I feel like I needed to bring it up at some point because of what has happened in the last week or two weeks. Uh, yeah, Great Gatsby, I did send you those books, yeah. And you, and you can read them. And the problem is that negativity, death, darkness, whatever these things are all in a row, what it represents, what happens is when people come into the market and they, they experience that, it feeds the belief system that's already on the planet and in the market itself anyways. And then they find themselves being pulled down like a vortex, uh, like a black hole into the market that pulls them down. The only way out of that and the only way to receive the mystery of the market and the answers that people seek is to embrace the belief system of life, not death, and to live it every moment that you breathe. To, to breathe and live every moment alive, to increase your aliveness instead of living every moment closer to death. Every moment that I live in my life right now, I am becoming more alive. Whereas many people think as they get older from this age to this age and this year to this year, they are one step closer to death. And many people are because their belief system is they believe in death. A few weeks ago, my grandfather died it was very difficult for me. I went home on a front. I went home on the weekend. It was a Martin Luther King. I'll tell you this one last thing, and I'm gonna let everybody go. <laughs> my aunt called me on Friday, the day before Martin Luther King weekend, when I thought I was gonna have a three-day weekend, have off, okay, enjoy myself. She called me at 5 o'clock on Friday night, 
and said that I had to come home, that pop-up was dying. I, I, I had no idea about any of this, okay? He was 84 years old, and I, and I knew he was in the hospital, but I knew they had done a lot of heart tests and they weren't finding anything wrong with him, so I just, this just was all a shock to me. So I immediately left then Saturday morning to go back to my hometown to see my grandfather. He was alone, and I spent four hours with him holding his hand, and he was squeezing my hand. They put him on morphine. On the Friday that my aunt called me, they put him on hospice. They had him on morphine. I said, why is he not talking? And the nurse said, he's on morphine. I said, what? I immediately said, I want to talk to the doctor right now. Because I knew that the morphine would kill him. And it did kill him. He was dead within three days. Because morphine kills you. Okay? If you don't know that, know that it kills you. Okay? But he was alive enough in his brain to know that I was there because he was squeezing my hand. I was talking to him for four hours. I, the doctor called me. He wasn't even in the hospital. He called me from where he was. He immediately ordered the nurse to change all the orders. Because how powerful I spoke to this doctor. Now, I was the granddaughter. I wasn't the wife or the daughter. And I was so powerful in my communication with the doctor that he ordered the nurse then to get him off the hospice, back into the regular care, and off the morphine. He had only been on it for 24 hours. And I thought, they can pull him back on this. We'll figure out what's wrong with him. Yada, yada, yada. Well, wouldn't you know, the other relatives came then later in the afternoon and then were upset with me for talking to the doctor. And my grandmother said, well, why did you talk to the doctor without talking to me first? And I said, Nanny, I told you I was going to talk to the doctor. Because Friday night, I called and talked to my grandmother. And I said, you know what, Nanny, I don't understand what's going on. Papa, it was fine at Christmas. I want to talk to the doctor. So I told my grandmother I was going to talk to the doctor. I told her I was going to talk to the doctor. She said, well, I don't think you're going to do it. I said, Nanny, don't you know me? What are you talking about? I wasn't going to. I said I'm going to do something. I am going to do it when I say I'm going to do something. Well, they were all upset because they thought this was the right thing to do. Get him on morphine, ease the pain, accept the death kind of thing. And my aunt said, you know, he's dying. This was Friday night. And I screamed and yelled on the phone with my aunt. And I said, I am not burying my grandfather after I just buried my uncle. Those of you that have been in the room with me know that my uncle had heart cancer and died in November. This is two deaths in my family in the last three months. And I screamed and yelled on the phone with my aunt. It was her husband. and said, I am not burying someone else in my family. I am not doing it. Their belief system allowed him to die. Now, the reality is that he was 84, okay? There were some things going on with him, but he would have lived longer if he hadn't been put on morphine. And he would have lived as long as he would have chosen to live, okay? So wouldn't you know the relatives come in? I literally almost got thrown out of the hospital because I'm arguing with my relatives about my grandfather in front of him, and I'm fighting to keep him alive, which would have meant getting him off the morphine, okay, for as long as I could keep him alive. And I almost got thrown out of the hospital. I, I had to leave then. In respect of my family, I left, okay. He was, he died on Monday, okay. And I had to come back home, and I knew then he was, I knew he was going to die because they then didn't allow the doctor to take him off the morphine and do everything else. And all of these physicians and everything, this is what they do. This is what they do. This is the process of what happens. Even these hospitals, even these physicians, this is the world that we live in, support death. They actually put people on morphine and it kills them. And I ended up having to go back then for the funeral on Friday. As you know, I closed out the room and I spoke at the funeral. And I'm going to say the words that I said at the funeral in the next time I do the wealth manifestation class because I wrote a great speech and there was 500 people there because my papa was so well liked and so well loved in the community. Um, and I said some very powerful things that probably no one even understood when I gave my speech at the funeral. And I'm going to say them in the wealth manifestation class next time I do it. But the reality is that 
Death is a belief system that exists on the planet. It, it, it has to do with stuff that goes on in the market. It, it is the reason that the mystery of the market will be inaccessible to many people because they believe in the belief system of death and fear and greed. And one of the reasons I'm able to see things that no one can see and that I will always be able to as long as my worlds do not collide is because I get it. Okay, because that is not my belief system. Fear, greed, and death is not my belief system. Aliveness is my belief system. And I am so uh, grateful and lucky that all I have to do is look outside my window and look at myself in the mirror and remind myself about my own aliveness and who I am. And I know who I am to know this. And, and the last two weeks, my worlds collided and the belief system of everything that I know exists with traders and the market crept up into my brain. I nipped it in the bud yesterday. But I'm telling you this because as long as you have these belief systems that are prevalent about the market and death and the planet, you will live your existence in struggle. And my wish for you, my desire for you is not to be in struggle. My desire for you is to change your own life, to live your own life to the fullest as much as you can, to recognize when you go down those roads and your worlds collide and you get sucked into the negativity and the death belief systems that exist on the planet and when things overcome you, you do not let it take you down. There is nothing more important than your life. You are an alive being, you are an intelligent being, you can trade the market. Your gift is that you found me and I even am saying these things to you for you to even know these things, to even do it. I'm gonna do my best I can to continue to teach and train and not let the worlds collide, okay? But for those of you that have been leaning on me, I want you to pull back and find some way to work through it without leaning on me so that I can separate the person that I am with the trader and the teacher doing what I do, which is to inspire you and to teach you and to train. But the negativity, the hard, 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 hard stuff you used to talk about how hard it is and this and that, you got to work through that on your own, read books and go see counselors. This is breaking. I should have done this, but I didn't. Uh, let me just look at some comments here. Anna is saying, yeah, Anna's father just passed away. She's saying it's a balance of letting go versus deciding what quality of life they'd have. You had the same issue with your dad. And they didn't care because he was old. It's sad. Yeah. Anna also took the cat. Let me just see how this one is. Uh, this one didn't break the low. I'm just looking at CPB. It had to move. If you took the trade, it came on down. It had to move, but it didn't break the low. You got to watch a CPB. Absolutely have a stop at 35. And I don't know if this is going to work now because it didn't break the low. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that in order for me to continue to see things that are phenomenal, I have to keep myself in a very balanced place. And I'm going to continually remind you the trading is easy. And we're going to just remind ourselves about that every every day. Every day we're going to remind ourselves about that. And every day we're going to get in here, we're going to make money. And I'm setting a new tone now for 2015 for the room for what we're doing. I don't want to hear any whining. I don't want to hear any complaining. I want to reinforce that the market is easy. If you have to take a loss in the day, it shouldn't be a big deal because you shouldn't be risking more than you can afford to lose in one trade or two trades. And I want those of you that know you have some issues to seek outside help. Those of you that have the mental issues. Okay. The people in the world that say they're not successful training because they say they're not disciplined really are lacking the information. You are not. 
That is where you're different. Everyone in here that's on the trial hasn't taken the class, but everyone that's taken the class, you're not lacking anything. I gave you everything I know. That extra special six cents thing I have, I, if I could bottle it up and put it into a, a liquid form and sell it, I would. I, I can't do that. It's experience and the six cents that I have which is because of where I am at in my level of brain activity, which I just discussed. But everything else, the real information, the price information, the charts, the gaps, everything I taught you, you know you took the class. There's no excuses for you not to be successful. It doesn't have to take you a month to even do it from the time you did the class. And if you've been here longer than 30 days and you're struggling with stuff, that has to do with trading, you can sign up for the mentoring sessions. If it has to do with something else, you got to work it out yourself. You can do it. There are people out there that can help you, professionals. But I'm telling you, there's a connection between aliveness and death that exists in the market. And this is the mystery that people search for and want. You connect yourself to your own aliveness and everything that you desire will come to you and you will be able to create. That is the, the connection, all right? And it is why that the market will be a mystery and will be something that people cannot succeed in because they will never change their belief systems in order to get that, to see it through, to do it. Because the belief systems that do exist on the planet that I'm discussing are run deep, okay? And you have to be a very strong person and you have to be in a place of knowing to not be in it. I mean, that's all I can say. And yet still sometimes your worlds will collide. But as long as you recognize it, you'll be able to pull yourself out of it. Okay, that was a very intense discussion. But does anyone have anything they want to say? Any comments, anything at all? I'm going to let the room go. Uh, next week, there's a ton of stuff to do. Again, there's lots and lots of earnings. Monday, the room is closed. Enjoy your three-day weekend. Enjoy your holiday. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Scott says, thank you, Melissa. You really enjoyed the trial. You're very good at what you do. You enjoyed the lectures. You're a very positive person. Yes. Yes, I am, Scott. Thank you for noticing. You're welcome, Jeff B. You really should do the class. Beast Trader, thanks for sharing, Melissa. What book would you recommend someone starting to read? Here, I'm going to plop these in the room because Great Gatsby had emailed me, and I did <clears throat> actually send these to him. This is the books I sent to him off the top of my head here. This is starting some starting material. You can't sign up for the room without doing the class, Jeff B. You have to do the class, whether the bullish got class or the bearish got class. Everyone that's a full-time member of the room has done the class. And the reason is because you have to know how to do this, because trading is something where you're risking your money, and I'm taking trades on the one-minute chart. So you can't join the room unless you do the class. But I am offering a special for any trial people here. If you sign up for the next Golden Gap class, bullish or bearish, by tomorrow, Valentine's Day, um, Hold on, let me just see. Thank you. Have a great talk. Have a good weekend. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. Yeah, uh, Jeff's saying it's a, it's, honestly, $3,000 is not a lot of money. I know some people say it's a lot of money, but again, your thought processes. You could make $3,000 you could have made it in CAG today. Now, I didn't take the first entry in CAG, but if CAG had had volume, let's just go pretend this did have volume. No, I didn't. The entry in CAG today was 33 by, I think I said 60. It was 30 cents. Look where it went. So, you know, once again, it, if you had taken this train, okay, you ha and, and I didn't do this in here. This was almost a dollar in 10 minutes. And this is one trade in one day. And honestly, 
And this is, you know, and, and I just, and again, I just have to call it the way it is. It has to do with your belief system. If you think $3,000 is a lot of money, I have to question why you are trading. You have to have money to trade the market. If people, I was, I was talking about this to my mom the other day because I'm raising the price of the class to $34.99. And I was, I told my parents this. The reality is if people don't have $3,500 to spend on my class, they shouldn't be trading. They have no business trading the market. You have to have money to trade. And if you don't have $3,500 to take on my class and $2,000 to sign up for the room for the year, which totals $5,000 for everything, if you want to do it, you have no business trading. You have no business trading the market. None. Okay. You have to have money to trade, and you have to have money to learn, and you have to have money to do it. I don't understand how people trade the market and think they're going to get anywhere with it when they have no clue what to do and no money, okay? I'm, t I'm, I'm being honest with you. Find the money. You will find it. It happens. Braulio is in here. He has a massive story. I've got to get, I've got to get Braulio on videotape. Braulio has a story of the century about something that happened to him. I mean, it is literally, yeah, I, I'm going to let Braulio tell it himself. I've got to get Braulio on Skype to tell his story. You think you're going to not do it or trade? Trust me, do the class. The money will come for you to trade. The money will come. If you don't have $3,000 to take my class, you shouldn't be trading. That's the best advice I can give you. Stop. Wait till you have money. What if you have a down day in your account? You don't know what to do, and you have an account, and you can't afford the class, and you don't know how to trade, and you have $5,000 in a prop account. You know, there's people who have $25,000 in a retail account and say they can't afford my class. That's nuts. They shouldn't be trading twenty five dollars if they don't know how to trade. People take overnight so they don't know how to trade. I mean, oh my gosh, people do not have a balanced mindset. I'm trying to teach you balance. I'm trying to teach you financial stability. This is why we use stops. This is why we look at one to two picks a day. This is why we stop and close out the room at 11 o'clock. This is why the benchmark for the class is going to be $3,500 because the people that trade with me are going to be in it for the long run. They're going to have money and they're going to make it. I don't want to tell people that they're going to make millions of dollars with $1,500. If You know, if I charge $500 for the class, which would be just ridiculous, if I charged $500 for the class, I'd probably have more people that did it. I wouldn't make any more money for the business. I probably, I definitely would make less. If I had more students, but I'd make less. I'd be working harder, and I'd make less, which I'm not going to do. The information is worth more than $500. But even if I did, do you know how many people that I'd have in here without any money in their accounts that would be up and down, up and down, up and down, couldn't even afford one loss in the day? I mean, it would be nuts. And then it, it would just be crazy. And then me, who cares about the people, my heart would be all over the place. I don't want to be worried about people like that. I don't want to be worried about people losing their account in one trade. I, I don't even want to go there. I want people that are stable, okay, that can trade, learn, be patient, see it through, know what to do, listen to what I'm saying. That's how you teach people what to do. You don't teach people what to do by offering them everything for nothing and promising them the world, which is not going to happen, okay? Can you make a lot of money in market? Yes. Do you need money to trade? Yes. Do you need money for the class? Yes. Is $3,500 a lot of money? No. If I made it in a trade, I'd be happy. But if I made $3,500 in the week or in one month, I wouldn't think it's a lot. I talked about that code, and I'm going to put that code in an email. I'm going to do a contest for that code. I, I told you the price of that code. I'm going to do a contest for that code for Fashion Week in the next couple of days. That code, the, you see, again, we talked about this. We're talking about this about money and how money works. And, and, we, and, and, and we talked about that when I said, guess the price of the Chanel coat. I live in New York, $3,500. $3,500 doesn't even pay people's rent in this city. If you have, if your rent's $3,500 in this city, your apartment is probably a piece of crap. You, you have roommates. You, if at $3,500, your apartment is crap. You can't even get a nice apartment in New York for $3,500. How about that? So, you know what? You, you have to, it's just... It you can't even get a nice apartment in Hoboken. Because years ago, before I left the city and then came back, I said, you know what? I'm going to see if I can find a beautiful, fabulous apartment in, in across the way in New Jersey. 
Do you know that I could even find a nice apartment in Hoboken for 35, for less than four grand? I couldn't find a nice apartment, a one bedroom. I wasn't even looking for a two bedroom, a one bedroom apartment. I could not even find in New Jersey in a luxury building with a doorman and all the fabulous things I have right now. I couldn't even find that for under $4,000 in New Jersey. And I wouldn't have even been in the city and I would have had to take a ferry to get anywhere to even get my hair done and go to out. I was like, what? I may as well just stay in New York. So I left, taught myself how to trade, took my money, went back to Pennsylvania, taught myself how to trade and came back. It, you know, it's all relative. It's all relative. And I'm telling you, it's not relative in reference to the market because you need money to trade. And I'm not saying you need a million dollars, but by golly, if $3,500 is too much for the class, then I don't know why you're trading. Honestly, I just have to be honest with you. And not only that, it's worth it. February 21st and 22nd is the next class. <laughs> All right. I lectured more than I wanted to today, and I'm, my voice is running out of energy here. And, uh, and I have a thousand things to do today because there's a snowstorm coming tonight. There's nothing wrong with New Jersey shower singer. New Jersey's great, but I'm saying it's not cheap. The taxes in New Jersey, if you buy a house, are like two and a quarter. Same as New York. It's ridiculous. Taxes are high in New Jersey. And the rent's high in New Jersey. And you're not in New York. So you may as well just be in New York. There's nothing wrong with New Jersey. But I'm saying New Jersey costs a lot of money. Taxes are high. School taxes are high. Real estate taxes are high. And the rent's high. So then you may as well live in New York. At least if I live in New York, I can walk or take a cab and be everywhere that I want to be in five, 10 minutes, literally. I can get on the subway, I can get in a cab, I can do anything I want within five to 10 minutes. If I live in New Jersey, I need a car, I have to drive, I have to take the ferry, I have to take the train, and it takes me 45 minutes to get somewhere, and I'm still paying all the money. So then that's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with New Jersey, but I'm saying I like New York for the quality of life of all the things that it offers. And I don't have to travel. It doesn't take me a long time to get places. And what I'm saying is it doesn't save you any money living in New Jersey. So then you may as well just live in New York. I know New Jersey's very high taxes. All right. I just went off on a tangent there. I don't know why. Anyways, be very careful here. It looks like CAG didn't break the law. And this didn't break the low either. So everyone should be out of all these shorts. It's Friday. Hopefully you got out, right, and made the money. Nothing broke the low. And the market's holding strong. All right, have a great weekend, everyone. I won't see any of you or talk to any of you until Tuesday. Everyone should have had a positive day today. Everyone. Yoga gal said she believed in in me when I started out. You did. Yoga Gal was one of the first people. Actually, Yoga Gal was the first woman that ever did the class. Yoga Gal was the first female person that ever did the Golden Gap class. And Yoga Gal used to be a stockbroker and used to work on the Chicago Exchange like years ago. And Yoga Gal, I'm going to call you. If not today, I'll call you over the weekend. Uh, rent still in Zynga? It went to one of the targets, Ren. 220 was a target. No piggies. This is actually a monster move for this. I know it's only 10 cents, but thanks, Great Gatsby. All right, just to follow up then, the next Golden Gap course, if you want to retake it, it's February 21st and 22nd. If you want to do the Bullish Gap class, the dates were wrong in the one email I sent out. It's actually March 11th, 12th, and 13th. If you've already taken the Bearish Gap class, you get a discount. If you're interested in signing up for that, email me. The Entries class I'm doing this week, next week, Wednesday and Thursday, two days. If you want to sign up for it, email me. If you already did it, you can email me if you want to retake it. And think about the things I said today. Okay. All right, have a good day, everyone. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Have a good weekend.